Hi, I'm Rachel Rosen. I'm on the selection committee for the New York Film Festival. Uh, and it's my great pleasure to now uh, welcome the director of Bell, Momoru Hosoda. And we also have Mikey McNamara here who's going to help us uh, with some interpretation. Uh, so I usually like to start at the very beginning. And I think I've read uh, in a few places that this is a film that you've wanted to make for some time. And so I'm just wondering if you can talk about what the original inspiration was to want to make this story. してるんですが、えっと、元々僕はまあ、ビオテ野獣っていう物語がまあ好きだったんですけども、まあ、あの、ジャンコクトの映画なんかも、え、見てすごく野獣がすごい素敵だなっていうか可愛いなと思ってた
質問ですけども、あのどうして今、現代になったかっていうと、えーまあ、美女と野獣っていうのは、非常にこう、まあ、時代とともに、非常にこう、なんていうのかな、もうまあ、内容が更新されているような。作品だと思うんです。まあ、もともとは18世紀のフランスですから、一種の封建社会の中での、えー、まあ、男女の関係、まあ、女性のあり方っていうのはあったと思うんですけども、えー、僕の記憶では91年版の美女とや自分は非常にこう、ベルっていうのが、あの、非常に現代的に描かれてて、とても生き生きして、魅力的だったと思います。で、でも、それでも30年前ですよね、1991年。そこからさらに、えー、時代が更新して、いろんな、えー、まあ価値観、えー、まあ人権的な問題、様々なことが、えー、と変化の途中にある、えー、今の、まあ現代の、うん、世界の中で、えー、もう一度こう、病手や自由っていうものを、あの、通して、えーそのまあ、価値観がどういうふうに変わっていったか、まあ、もしくはそういう中でも18世紀から変わらないものっていうのはどういうものなのか、変わっていくものと変わらないもの、その両方を、えー、考えるために今、美女手や自由を、えー、作るっていうことに大きな意義があると思って作りました。インシデンタリー、I、uh, too saw that work in progress version that, that you're referring to, and、uh, if I recall, it, it was supposed to be completed in time. For the festival, but they couldn't. So there was some footage or certain portions and scenes that、uh, was still either storyboard or it lacked color at the time. So I was just admiring the level of skill of the animators who were able to, to put this film together. And I, I've watched it a dozen times to, or dozens of times, really, to be honest, to kind of almost study and break down this very high level of、uh, animation skill. And to, to your question about why now, why is it important to, to reinterpret this now? I think the story of Beauty and the Beast is something that almost requires kind of constant updating in accordance with the time and, and the era. The original story being、uh, 18th century France, I think there is a much different image of femininity as well as the relationship between man and a woman. And I think Disney's interpretation of Belle, of course, she's a very attractive heroine in, in that particular movie, but it has been 30 years since that movie was released. And I believe values have shifted over time as well as new issues have arisen in the human rights. Space. So I think there was another major shift that has happened since that version. So I thought perhaps, you know, we can kind of reevaluate our social climate through this lens of Beauty and the Beast and see what values have changed since 18th century France, what hasn't changed. I thought it was a very interesting subject to explore. Yeah, I, I agree. And one of the things I find so interesting about the film is the way. Those social values are communicated in this film through technology. And one of the things I really appreciate about this film and many of your other films is that,、um, unlike a lot of modern films,、um, it allows to explore both the positive and negative aspects of technology today. And I'm just wondering,、uh, it's not really a question, but I'm just wondering if you could really talk a little bit about、uh, technology and how you think it factors into this story、um, in its good and positive and negative aspects. あのー、この映画、まあ、この現代に美女と野獣を作るにあたって、どういう切り口で作るかと考えて思いついたのは、インターネット世界の中で美女と野獣をやったらどうなるかってことを考えました。で、あのー、まあ、僕は美女と野獣の中でも野獣が好きなんですけど、野獣のこう、まあ、凶暴な外見に対して、非常にこう、まあ、あのー、まあ、心の方は、まあ、臆病だったり、まあ、優しかったりっていうふうにする。まあ、一種の二重性が非常にあるキャラクターですよね、野獣っていうのは。で、そういうことと、このインターネットを、まあ僕ら、まあ接続して、例えば SNS なんかに接続すると、まあ本当の自分と、まあ SNS 上の自分、インターネット上の自分っていうのは、やっぱりこう二重性がある。ちょっとこう、まあ同じようでいって、いや、微妙にやっぱりそれはその立ち位置や、まあ言動が違うっていう、そういう二重性がこう響き合うんじゃないかと思って、
、ビ、え、ジ、ー、とやジオとインターネット社会っていう、まあ、僕は現代のインターネット社会っていうのは、非常にこう、あのー、しっくり合わさっていくんじゃないかなっていう、えー、切り口で作ることをしました。で、あの、そのインターネット世界っていうのは、まあ、やっぱり僕、まあ、20年前から、この、ね、インターネットを舞台に、えー、映画を作ってますが、やはり、こう、あの、まあ、もちろん、こう、ひまあ、非常に発展した面もあれば、同時にやっぱり、えー、日本では、誹謗中傷問題、インターネットを通して非常にこう、相手を攻撃するっていう問題がこう、社会問題化してて、まあ日本だけじゃない、あの、全世界でそうだと思うんですけども、えー、そういうこう、あの、まあとってもこう、あの、激しい世界になっていると思います。そういう中で若い人が、そういうこう、まあ何か行動を起こすとすぐになんかインターネットで戦えたりする。そういうことの中でどうやってそういうものを乗り越えて、彼らがこう、新しい、この世界、インターネットの世界の中で自分の力を発揮していくのか、そういうようなことを、こう、まあ、彼ら、若い人、まあ、たちが、えー、この世界で、えー、まあ、頑張って自分の、まあ、理想的な、えー、姿になるために頑張るってことを、なんかこう、まあ、応援するような意味でも、まあ、その、えー、インターネットのしんどい部分も含めて、両方描いたっていうことなんですね。ありがとうございます。When I was... Thinking about Beauty and the Beast in the context of our modern society, it gave me the idea of multiplying it or kind of contrasting it or putting it into the context of the internet for a very connected kind of world. And I personally really like the, the Beast it, oftentimes. And I think that's because on the e x t e r i has a very violent or aggressive bestial appearance, whereas inside his heart or his mind, he has his own fears and he has his own. Kindness. And there is this really interesting duality that is happening within one character. And I believe that the same thing is happening with us as a, a species on the internet, where we have our true selves and then we have our projection of ourselves that we display or choose to display on the internet or this very connected network. And there are, of course, I think similarities and common denominators between both versions, but also very. Contrasting and striking differences that you can find between yourself and, and your projection. So, when thinking about that, I thought this idea of Beauty and the Beast made a good complement to the internet kind of context or, or backdrop. And I've been tackling this idea of the internet or a very networked world since 20 years ago and in some of my other films as well. And I believe that. As the technology has developed quite a bit, and in our most modern iteration of it, it's become a very toxic environment where it's okay to attack people under the guise of anonymity. And I don't think this is a, a phenomenon unique to just Japan. I think it's a very worldwide almost、um, kind of phenomenon. And it's become a very intense space, if you will. So I think it, it's really tough for a lot of our, our younger generations or a lot of our youth to. They come face to face and, and understand this. Where if something bad happens, they go on the internet and immediately bash their peers or vice versa. And that has somehow become、uh, acceptable. So I'm hoping that this movie can give these kids the idea or, or inspiration to overcome a lot of that and help them discover and really find and, and lean into their own unique strengths. And, Almost realize the ideal version of themselves. So I, I hope this movie can kind of cheer those, cheer those kids on and, and give them a beacon of hope. Yeah, agree. I also, may, maybe <laughs> I'm, you can tell me if I'm reading too much into this, but I also see in this portrayal a little bit of a metaphor for the creative process, in that Belle or Suzu really is able to. Dis- rediscover her own authentic self through the artificiality of this character. And yet, the movie is also showing that it, the really the power of that is in her authentic self.、Um, I am just wondering if you、uh, see any similarities、uh, between you, you, you as a creator of. This、uh, animated story, and, and whether in some ways 
by creating the films that you create, uh, you're able to discover something authentic about yourself. うん。まずその映画の中のえ、スーツっていうのはあのね、あの、ま、日本の田舎のその高校のクラスの片隅で、ま、うつむいて本でも読んでるような大人しい女の子っていう風な形でえ、この映画に登場します。なんていうのかな
can help get the reflection of that. And to your point about it being a metaphor for the creative process, uh, I haven't <laughs> given it that much thought, but I, I do agree that certain times I discover something unexpected through the process of creating a movie uh, about myself. Um, I would love for you to speak a little bit about uh, these two very vibrant, but very different worlds that are portrayed in the movie and uh, how you conceived of the world of you and, and how that would be different from the real world of uh, Suzu. Uh, visually, how you would distinguish them? うん、あの、ま、あの、ベルがその、ま、50人が参加するインターネットの仮想上の仮想空間いうの中心で歌う歌姫であるっていう風に設定した時に、その彼女の正体は誰かって考えた時に全く真反対の場所に住んでる意外
known and beloved Disney movies, but also the animators from Cartoon Saloon, uh, who I guess had a Oscar nominated movie on the circuit the same year you also had an Oscar nominated movie last year. So Tom Moore and Ross Stewart, um, and just sort of your idea of involving all these incredible talents in, in the creation of this film. そうですね。まあ、そもそも、まあ、僕も、あの、あの、さっきも言いました通り、その91年版の美女と野獣が、あの、を、が非常に好きで、それはその、それを作った、えー、まあ、グレン・キーンという人ですね。あの、野獣のキーアニメーターだった、えー、グレン・キーンを、まあ、アニメーターとして非常に、えー、まあ、30年間尊敬してまいりました。あの、彼の表現力、アニメーションの、えー、を非常に華やかに、えー、素晴らしく見せる力っていうのに憧れて、えー、参りました。まあ、なので、まあ、その、自分なりの美女と野獣を作ろうと思った時に、まあ、その、挨拶に行ったんですね。グレン・キーンさんに、はじめましてって、あの、あなたのことをずっと尊敬しましたけども、えー、えー、新しい僕なりの美女と野獣を作ろうと思いますっていうふうなことを言いに行ったんですけども、えー、彼はまあ、ちょうどその、その時、えー、制作中の、えー、オーバーザムーンっていうね、あのネットフリックスの映画を制作中だったんですけど、話を聞いてくれて頑張ってくれっていうふうに、えー、言ってくれて嬉しかったです。で、その時に実は、えっ、ー、と、ジン・キムさんと会ったんですね。ジン・キムさんはそのオーバーザムーンの、えー、キャラクターデザイナーで、えー、グレン・キーンさんと一緒に仕事をしてた。で、僕はもちろんそのグレン・キーンさんもまあ長年大好きだったんですけども、そのジン・キムさんのこの、ここ10年、15年ぐらいの、えー、っと、ディズニーの、えー、映画を非常にこう洗練されたキャラクターで、えー、作った、えー、やはり尊敬する素晴らしいアニメーター、デザイナーだと思っていたので、やはりその、ジン・キムさんにあの会えてとても嬉しかった。そして、思わず、まあ、あの、まあ、もし機会があったら一緒にお仕事を支えてもらえたら嬉しいっていうようなことを、えー、言いました。で、まあ、かあの、で、ジン・キムさんも、あ、もし、あの、機会があればぜひっていうふうに言ってくださって。まあ、それからまあ、非常にこう、あの、で、それがまあ、その場限りの社交辞令ではなくて、本当に実際に一緒に仕事をして、この、あの、シナリオをもとに、ベルっていうのはどういう人物か、どういう外見か、どういう、えー、魂の持ち主なのかっていうのを一緒に、考えながらデザインすることができました。とても光栄な、えー、体験でした。まあ、同じように、えー、まあ、トム・ーア監督ともですね、非常にこう、まあ、あのー、なんだインディペンデントなプロダクションで映画を作って、それをこう、世界のいろんな人たちに見てもらおうっていう、そういう、えー、姿勢が、僕らのスタジオ、スタジオ地図とすごく、えー、近いものがあると思って、えー、非常にこう、協力して一緒にやっていこうっていうふうな、ことを話して、えー、それで、えー、今回のコラボレーションが実現しました。非常にこの絵がたくさんの、えー、まあ、恵まれた、あの、多くの、あの、まあ、コラボレーションがあって、とても、実は贅沢な映画だと思います。はい。うん。I, of course, really, really love the 1991 Disney's Beauty and the Beast. And、uh, one of the key animators, Glenn Keane,、uh, he was the key animator for the Beast. I, I've had an immense amount of respect for him over the last 30 years and just what he is able to do and the range of expression that he brings to the animation, to the screen. It's just, for me personally, un unprecedented. So when I decided I was going to make my own interpretation of Beauty and the Beast, I went to go see him and I wanted to kind of say hi and let him know, hey, I plan to, to do this. And he, of course, was working on Over the Moon at the time. And he told me, well, good, best of luck to you. And from there, I was very fortunate enough to be able to meet Gene Kim. And you know, we talked, he, he's doing character design、uh, on Over the Moon for, for Glenn. But you know, he kind of also really established the visual look or, or language of Disney characters' design in a way of the last 10 to 15 years. So, as a character designer, I have, of course, a, a lot of、uh, respect for what, what he's done as well. And then we just left it at, you know, if there's ever a chance for us to work together, perhaps someday. And、uh, Gene Kim was very, very, 
kind and said, sure, if the opportunity presents itself. And I was very fortunate. I thought at the time, well, maybe these are just formalities that you say to people whenever you meet another creator. But uh, thankfully, it didn't end at, at just that. And with this Beauty and the Beast, we had the chance to really explore what kind of character Belle was going to play. Who, who is Belle, really? And digging deeper and deeper together with uh, Gene Kim, we were able to kind of discover the, the essence that he transformed that into uh, the design that he did. So it was a huge honor for me to be able to go through this process. And I would say similarly uh, with Tom Moore, he of course has his own independent animation studio, if you were in this very small studio is broadcasting movies to the world, which I think is a very similar setup to what we have here at, uh, at Studio Chizu. So as fellow independent animated feature film studios, you know, I was very happy to be able to, to work together and collaborate uh, with him and almost kind of combine our strengths or project what we wanted to in, into the world. And uh, I think this movie in that way had very fortunate collaborations in many unexpected areas and uh, was a very kind of extravagant <laughs> in terms of talent uh, movie. Mm, well, thank you so much. I have many more questions I could ask you, but uh, we have a limited amount of time since this will be actually in a theater. Um, so thank you so much uh, for the movie uh, and for joining us to share your thoughts about it. いや、あの、本当言えばコロナ禍で中ではね、あの、ニューヨークに、え、行って、え、オーディエンスの皆さんと、そしてレイチェルさんと一緒にこの映画のことを、あの、ま、いろいろお伝えしたかったんですけども、